Good morning, class. See you again. I told you I'll be seeing you. A couple of weeks or so, we're here. And it's February the 6th, 2022. February the 6th. That's a getting on in the year already. And we just thank God for February the 6th that we all here and we healthy and, you know, we got food to eat and, you know, we got things to do. We work with our families and loved ones are the ones that we can't get close to. And we thank God, you know, for that. So we're going to open up today, but this is Sunday and um, our lesson is Truth to Power today. Truth to Power. And our big idea, Nathan condemns David. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Nathan a little bit today. During the years I've been here in Sunday school, we hadn't talked about Nathan too much. So today we're going to learn a little bit about Nathan, and he is a prophet. And we know the prophet's job, don't we? All right, they're just like a preacher. They go out and tell you what's what, and they prophesy to you. And that's what Nathan did to David. And we love, you know, we love David and the things we learned from David, you know, he wasn't perfect, but he was loved by God and he was loved by us. All right, we're going to open up with prayer. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we bow today thanking you, God, for being God, an awesome God, a loving God, a God that we can go to at any time, and we just thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross that we might have right to the tree of life and we thank you Lord for that we just love you Lord and we just thank you and we thank you Lord for this day that you have blessed us with another Sunday that we can come to the children and talk to them a little bit you know about the lesson and that they will learn something from the lesson something to think about you know during the week we ask that you be with them and this be with us as our church family as a whole our pastor and our first lady and brother Lance and all around the church we just thank you, Lord, and we just love them all. And we just thank you, Lord, for us coming back together, being able to see some of them. And the ones that hadn't come back yet, just be with them and bless them and let them come back whenever they feel comfortable, whenever they feel safe. But the ones here, we ask that you be with us and just bless us, Lord, all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Truth to power. It's a big idea. We said earlier. Nathan condemns David. All right, we're going to read the lesson story first, and then we're going to go into the scripture, into the subject of the lesson. All right, Lester had decided that he was going to run for class president. He took out money he had saved from working and went to the mall to buy new clothes. As he walked around, he thought, okay, how would a class president dress? I'm not wearing any busted shoes or clothes. When I give my speech tomorrow, when they see me, they will see that I know how to look good. Oh, big head fella. Lester, Craig called. Man, I heard you was running for office. Look, I would make a great vice president. Let me help with the campaign. You need a speech and... Lester cut him off. <laughs> Listen, I got this. You can be my vice president, but I am the one running for the show, and I don't want anyone telling me what to do. Cool? You imagine how that little fella felt. Uh, okay, chill. I was just trying to help and give some advice. Craig shook his head and walked away. Thanks. Don't need it. I'm good. And he went back to the checking himself in the mirror at the store. First thing first, Lester thought, I need to buy some new shoes. New shoes, new jeans, new shirt, and a nice watch. The next day, Lester was out early and ready to be a leader. Ready to be a leader, ready to be president. The next day, Lester was out early and he had a new haircut, and his clothes looked good. He just knew he had the makings of a good 
leader. He just knew it. He just fell in the mind because everything was just falling in place for him. He, com he confidently walked to the cafeteria, sat at a side table, and put his feet on the table. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yes. Looking good, Lester, said Jessica. He played it cool, but was elated that she had noticed. When it, when it was his turn to speak, he walked on the stage, looked at the crowd, and waved. Lester, while we appreciate you posing for us, we would like to hear your prepared speech, the principal said. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> how he was looking in? The shot of panic looked at Craig in, his, in the audience. He forgot to write a speech. That's the purpose of it, writing a speech and they hear. Craig shook his head and walked off out of the cafeteria, leaving him with the consequences of his actions. All right, and we learned years ago, back back for a while ago, there are consequences when we're not, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Or we do bad things, we have to pay for them. And so the way he was treating his friend and all that, he had to pay for them, the consequences. He had to walk out looking silly. All right, what was Lester's attitude about running for class president? What was his attitude? He had the big head. He's tough. He got it. He don't need anybody. Nobody to help him. He's fine. He got it. He looked good, and he knew what he was going to do. Why didn't he listen to Craig? Why didn't he listen to his friend? Didn't want anybody button in. He got it. Like we told you a couple of weeks ago in our lesson, sometimes we need people to help. We need others. We can't do everything by ourselves. So we need other people to help. And he needed Craig to help him. You know, Craig could have had all that out of the way, his speech and stuff. How do you think the election went? All right, if he didn't have a speech, nothing going on, and he walked out. Did those new shoes pay off? The new haircut and all the new clothes? No, because he didn't do what he was asked to do in running for any kind of office. Just like today, we vote for the president, we vote for everybody. You have to make a speech. And he forgot his speech. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> we don't want you all to get so cute and, you know, Sister Rose asks you to do something, you know you got to make a speech, just like the oratorical thing a couple of weeks ago. They knew oratorical, they had to talk. How would they look good to getting up there with no paper or nothing in their head? or hadn't even studied what they was going to say about Martin Luther King. So the consequences, what Craig, what he had to pay. All right, good little story. We're going to go to our scripture and see what, the, what we're talking about, you know, David and Nathan and all that stuff. But we're going to do a little bit of background first. I like to do a little background and let you see what's going on, you know, bring you up to the date where we are today in the lesson. And so we're going to read a, just a little background let you get a good understanding about David and Nathan. All right. God reveals, God uses Nathan to reveal to David the truth of his own actions. We all have actions, the truth of our actions. Similarity, Christ would use many parables doing the ministry, preaching and teaching by illustration can actually lead to a greater revelation in some cases. Then I, remember when Jesus would do speaking parables, you know, say a little story, then we get another understanding from the parable. That's what, but in verse 5, David's anger reached its highest point as he was insulted on behalf of the poor man and his love. For the lamb. So David had to be real, real careful of what he thought and what he did. He had done some things. He had sinned. And we know that when we sin, you know, the consequences, we have to do that. And Nathan had told him this little, told him this little story, but, you know, he didn't want to listen to it. You know, Nathan was a faithful prophet, and he was a trusted advisor. Unlike others 
who hover closer to see the power, he maintained his faithfulness to God first. And that's what Nathan did. First, it was to God. He was going to do as God had told him to do, and that was it. So in this moment of revelation, David went from being royal to Rome. And the anger he demonstrated would soon be turned towards himself. God reveals our wrongs and to us so that we can take corrective action. He show us we do things and we know when we're being sneaky, but you know, God always know and he reveals, you know, these things to us. David was no stranger to repentance. If that's one good that's one thing I liked about David. If David sinned or he did wrong, he went to God. He asked for forgiveness, and that's what we have to do. We can't be shamed, but we have to go to God and ask for forgiveness, and he will, you know, forgive us. And that's where God, you know, want us, he want us to come to him. He want us to ask, because we can't do it by ourselves. We can't forgive ourselves, because we forgive ourselves. We wouldn't be running back and forth to Jesus. So David has sinned. And Nathan has come to David and telling him this parable. He used a parable. And so David had to figure out the parable, and then Nathan told who the parable was. All right, let's go to our lesson, 2 Samuel 12, 1 through 9, and 13 through 15. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, this is a parable. There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except the little ewe lamb he had bought. I want you to listen to it and you can figure it out, you know, for yourself. He raised it and it grew up with him and his children. This is the poor man. It shared his food, drank from his cup, even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now, a traveler came to the rich man. You know, back then people was traveling through the land, and this traveler came to the rich man's house. But the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep and cattle to prepare a meal for a traveler who had come to him. You know, back then the people traveled and they went around from place to places and they'll stop at a house and that home and those people would feed them, you know, and take care of them. So this traveler had stopped at the rich man's house. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. No wonder why he did that. He had all the stuff. Poor man had what? One. David burned, burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, this is Nathan is telling David, so David got to answer him. As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. That was David. He said he must die. He must pay for the lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. David said, huh? <laughs> yeah, you are the man. So David had to think on that a little bit. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, I anointed you king over Israel. Now at this time, David is king. And I delivered you from the land, the hand of Saul. I gave you master's house to you and your master's wife into your arms. This is God, all the things he had done for David. I gave you all the Israel and Judah, and if all the, this had been too little, I would have given you even more, and God will give us more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in the, in the eyes? You struck down Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword and took his wife to be your own. That was the sin that David did. 
this is what Nathan was telling him. And the sin was Uriah. He was a man of war in the army. But David took his wife while he was out there. And that, that was the sin that David did. We won't go into deep what all he did, but he sinned against God when he took Uriah's wife. You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Uriah was killed because David put him on the front line to be killed. You know, that's what we do sometimes. We try to cover up our sins, and that's what he did. He said, maybe if I put Uriah, you know, a husband on the front line, he get killed, and then I could be comfortable with his wife. And that's what David did. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. So there God doing his good thing again. He spared him again. He wasn't going to die. And because David, what we said earlier, he knew how to repent. He knew how to go to God and ask God for forgiveness. And that's what he did. And God didn't kill him. But because by doing this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord. And this is where your consequences come in. The son born, you would die. Because when he got with Uriah's wife when she, was, she got pregnant. And so there was a baby to be born. And this is what God telling him. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had bore with David, and he became ill. He became ill, the Lord struck him, and he died. See, we have to pay the consequences of the sins and things we do in our lives. And God wants us to be able to come to him, and he will forgive us, and he keep on forgiving us, but you got to pay for some of the bad things that we do, you know, in our life. All the sins that we sin against God, we have to pay for them. And the way David paid with his wife, Uriah's wife, and David had the baby, God killed the child. And so, and sometimes, you know, the consequences is not that bad, but sometimes it is death. And so death came into this picture. All right, so we can't go around doing bad things and sneaking and doing this and that and think we're getting away with it because we're not. God knows. He knows all things. He sees all things, and he's going to get us. We're going to pay for it. But God is a loving God. Remember that, too. All right, our questions. How did the illustration convict David? How did it convict him? See, God put these things in our mind, and we know God's word, and we know, you know, the things that we do, and we know what's not pleasing to God. After Nathan talked to David, it was speaking of the things he had done. The Lord opened his eyes. Yeah, the Lord opened up your eyes, and if you don't understand, if you don't see, you will see when God opened your eyes. All right. How does God deal with secret sin? All right, 2 Samuel 12, 12, and you can all, you know, read that. How does God deal with sin? Mm, I had it marked. can't find it in my book. You struck Uriah's wife and the Hittites, and, and 12 wasn't in this book, so it says 12, 12, but... It wasn't in the lesson. We had to look it up, you know, in the Bible. But um, how does God deal with sin? The thing that you do in secret and all that. God will bring it to the light where everyone will see. He will. So everyone saw what David, David sinned. But he did it secretly. But it was open. God saw it and... You know, God had told Nathan, but we all do things secretly. We think people are not seeing us. God is not seeing us, but he sees us. And so whenever we sin secretly, he brings it to the light. And that's in Second Samuel 12, 12. You have to look in your Bible and you read that. But that's what God did. Number three, 
How can you model David's humility revealed in 2 Samuel 12, 13? All right, read 13. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die, but, but, because by doing this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord. The son born to you will die. He asked God to forgive him, and he gave him, and he repented. But, you know, he didn't kill David, but he killed, you know, his son. And we have to be careful about this. Sometimes it's not always us. It could be some of your family members or some of your friends and things you do, and God would do the sin. All right, we need to remember if we sin like David, we must face our consequences, face the consequences of our sin. And that is our lesson that once we, the truth and the power, Nathan condemns David. Nathan tells David of his sin. God opened David's eyes to see, revealed the sin to him. He knew this. God did not kill David, but he did kill the son. And we want to be real careful about that class. We just really don't want to sin. But, you know, I know we sin and do little things. And sometimes we sin, sin class, we don't even know we're sinning. We don't know it's a sin. But then the Lord will open our eyes and we'll see, you know, certain things. And we'll say, was that a sin? Did I do that? God opened our eyes that we see some of these things. And all we have to do, all we have to do is ask God for forgiveness. And he will, you know, forgive us. David's life and allowed him to continue to fulfill the call upon his life. There were still consequences, but Nathan intervention of the Lord instruction saved David from this catastrophe. So David was forgiven of his sin because God loved him and David's work went on. And that was the story of David and Uriah, the Hittite man, and his wife. And we talked about that years ago in Sunday school. It's been a while since we talked about that too. How, you know, the sin that had happened. And Nathan said to David, you are the man. You are the man that did this with the traveler and the lamb and all this stuff. But, you know, I was wondering, why did the man with all that money and all those, you know, lambs and stuff he had, you know, he couldn't use one of his lambs to give to the traveler to help someone else. He wanted to take from someone else. See, that wasn't right. And that was a sin. And all this was revealed, you know, just the parable that Nathan said to David, but these things were revealed. And we thank you for the class, and we hope you learned something today about the lesson. You know, just be, be honest and, you know, be obedient in truth to power. Always try your best to, you know, tell the truth, and then things will work out better, you know, in our life. And we want you to remember... As we always say, wear your mask, wash those hands, and keep your distance. And be able to stay well and, you know, be healthy. Nothing happened to you, you know, around your schools and your churches and places you go. So we all stay healthy and we'll all see you again next time. Bless you and we love you.